Hello, everybody. We're the, uh, looking at the limiting reactant lab for those of you remote. <clears throat> All right. So looking at my procedure, I've got my X amount of grams of reactant X and Y amount of grams of reactant Y. You can see they're both white solids. So I'm just going to basically run through the procedure. So I got my two masses of my white solids. I'm going to put 25 mils of distilled water in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just need to dissolve our solids. We're going to add more eventually to the mixture. So this is just used again to dissolve it. Because <clears throat> adding two solids to each other like this doesn't they won't actually react. They both need to be aqueous solutions in order to react. The ions got to move around and hit each other. So here we go. <clears throat> so water's added, time to stir. Let's speed this up. Close enough. You can see there are still little bits of solids in there, but we get the point where we just need to make these two solids dissolve in the water and then we could uh, make them work. So one thing you're gonna see me do here is, um, again, if you eat chili, I always relate this to chili because chili is uh, obviously the, you know, the dark, you know, you know what chili looks like. If I just take this stirring rod and put it on the table, I lose some product. Just like if I eat chili with a spoon and then take the spoon out and put it on the table, I'm going to get chili on the table. All right, and that's nasty. So what I like to do is squirt some of the distilled water down the stirring rod. And what that does is it, it makes all of those extra ions that were on the stirring rod, now they're in my beaker. I know it doesn't do a ton with this little experiment, but it's just good to know. And again, a lot of people think, oh, there's nothing on the stirring rod because it's clear and colorless. Well, there is. There's stuff on here. <clears throat> so just because something's clear and colorless doesn't mean that it's not there. So I do the same with this. The water doesn't screw anything up because I added water to it anyways, and you're going to see me later add water to it again. So I've got my two solutions. Next part of the lab is to actually mix the two. And you're going to see me do something similar with the distilled water the next time because I want to get everything from this beaker into here. Everything. Just like if you pour out chili from one bowl into another, you want to use, you want to get all of it from one bowl into the other. I'm going to do something similar with the water. So let's mix these two together. Let's see what we get. Let that sit for a little while. You can see that. We have made a precipitate. <clears throat> so basically a big version of what we did uh, in January. And if you didn't see that, what I did is I added some more distilled water to this beaker just so I can rinse the bottom and get even more of those whatever reactant X or Y it was, ions in there. So that beaker is good to go. Okay. So I'm going to let this sit for another minute just to let the ions kind of find each other and react. You can definitely see we've got some kind of big, chunky, mucusy looking stuff there. This is your precipitate. So on the balanced equation, make sure that you figure out, or you already did, hopefully, figure out which product is your precipitate. It's not water. So if you were doing the theoretical yield to find uh, grams of water, uh, water's not your precipitate in this case because, well, water is that clear, colorless liquid stuff. So you can't precipitate out solid water in this case. So look back at January when we did the solubility stuff. Um, all right. So we'll let this sit for a little while longer. Let's fast forward. 
All right. So here comes the filtering part. So I need to get this filtered because I want to make I want to measure out eventually how many grams of the precipitate I made. So what I'm going to do is use a little filtration device. You can see in here I've got a little piece of filter paper just kind of shoved in there. It looks like a, you know, it's a it's a cone shape. I got my cone shaped funnel and I got a flask. So a little filtration apparatus you could say. <clears throat> now this is the most exciting part of the experiment. It's like making coffee. All you do is put the mixture in the filter and the uh, coffee machine is already turned on. We just have to wait until everything goes through. So we have to take our time with it though. We can't rush. You can't make coffee in 30 seconds at home. You have to wait until you know your coffee's ready. So same thing here. So I'm just gonna slowly pour some of my mixture in the funnel slash filter paper. And if I'm doing it correctly, the liquid going through into the flask should be clear. If it's not clear, that means I'm losing precipitate, which is bad, <clears throat> which means there might be a hole in my funnel, or sorry, uh, a hole in my filter paper. Maybe the liquid, the mixture is like above the filter paper in here, which is just poor filtering uh, techniques. So the slower you go, the better. But you know, students don't, in here don't want to be in here for you know three hours filtering some white precipitate. So normally for these experiments, I say we have to be quick, or we have, we have to be quick and efficient. So I don't want you taking you know an hour to just mix the two solutions. You have to be quick and efficient. So. Being fast is good, but not just fast and messy, but fast and efficient. So with, you know, you eventually become better with time, with perfect practice. So let's speed through this. What you saw me just do is rinse the inside of this beaker with some more distilled water. Again, the more you rinse it, the more to get the actual white solid in the filter paper, the better. But as you can see, I'm not going to get all the white solid because some of it adheres to the glass, to the beaker. So error. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to fast forward to the way end. What you're seeing here is that, again, I am just slowly, <laughs> slowly, carefully uh, filtering out my precipitate. It's going to take some time. So I'm just going to fast forward to when I get my dried precipitate onto a piece of uh, paper, onto a paper towel, and then I can uh, weigh it out. And there we go. All right, so there we go. There's our precipitate at the end. Uh, if you're remote, let's say that, or not not let's say, but I did get, um, I don't like saying let's say, but I did get an 80% yield, 80.0% yield. So based on the 80.0% yield, uh, I'd like you to figure out what the actual yield would be. Okay. So... With your numbers, let's say you got an 80% yield. Again, since you're not actually performing the experiment yourself, do the math to figure out your actual yield if you got an 80% yield. Okay, great. <clears throat> Thank you.